Welcome to Six and Sixty. This is our attempt to bring a little bit of the uh, startup culture and the demo culture into the online news association. This is very much an experiment, and that's apropos because we're going to be looking at a lot of experiments, and that's important today in online news. So uh, I'm really excited about this. Uh, I'm going to start by just uh, quickly introducing uh, our judges for today, and then we're going to uh, have Susan tell us a little bit about the criteria, and then we'll just get right into the presentations. So to my left, Susan Murnett, who most of you, I think, heard do a fantastic job this morning with Evan Williams of Twitter. She is formerly of Yahoo and is now the founder of Oakland Local. Uh, to her left is Christine Heron, who is a principal with First Round Capital and knows a lot about technology startups and what works and what doesn't, so we're thrilled <laughs> to have her here today. We have Mary Hodder who is a product specialist, uh, works with, and is the founder of Wellness Mobile. And so we're excited to have her because she has a product focus and so she's going to be asking a lot of tough questions of our presenters in terms of usability and that's excellent. Then we have David Cohn, founder of Spot Us, a thriving journalistic entrepreneur enterprise uh, up in the Bay Area, or here in the Bay Area, excuse me. And so he's going to give us uh, his take and, and also provide some more grilling questions for our presenters, who I know are chomping at the bit. <laughs> My name is Mark Briggs. I am uh, a, a bit of a, a journalist entrepreneur myself. Uh, I used to work for news companies and now I have my own company called Sarah Media. I'm also an author. I wrote a book called Journalism 2.0 and have a new book coming out next month called Journalism Next. Um, and without further ado, let's go over the criteria and get on with the presentations. It's so great to see everybody here. I think this is going to be a fun session and I just wanted to tell you how we arrived at these uh, panelists. We're going to have five, so I guess we really could be five and 50 because one of our panelists had a family emergency and had to drop out and according to the rules, we're not going to present for him. What we're going to do is we're going to have five people present who all submitted their ideas out of a pool of about 20 and we picked these people because they all met our criteria of having uh, fairly new projects that were um, less than 18 months old in the current incarnation and that they'd received um, less than um, $20,000 in funding. Josh Wilson just got a grant that pushed him over that after we accepted him, so we're letting him present, though now he's you know, received a little bit more. Um, we looked for fresh ideas, and we looked for a range of experience. So we have everyone from a San Jose State college student to um, you know, a couple of people who are veterans and who um, have been in the industry and had ideas a few times. We're going to look for input from you and from the judges. The format we're going to follow is that each person is going to get up and pitch. We have some uh, prezos, but you know all of these are really concepts to help you understand the idea. Um, after the person has five minutes to pitch, the judges will ask questions. If there's time, people in the audience can also ask questions. Take notes and keep track of what you like because at the end, we're going to ask the presenters to leave and we're going to ask you what you think. We'll do some crowdsourcing on the voting as well as uh, confer ourselves. And with your help, we'll pick a winner. And the winner is um, eligible. The plan is to have a uh, consultation with both a product development slash UI specialist and with a VC. So while most of these ideas are somewhat early stage, these are conversations that could help move them along toward becoming a reality. And this is supposed to be fun. Uh, we were inspired by uh, Pinka Kucha, which are presentations done very, very quickly, and by Ignite, another uh, startup culture thing that, again, is a fast-paced presentation. We really appreciate everybody's bravery in presenting new ideas, and we want to honor your entrepreneurship. So let's get the first presenter up. And that is Suzanne Yeda. Hi, my name is Suzanne Yeda. I am a San Jose State student and a social media strategist for the public press. And my idea is called Calendar Shot. And the basic concept is if you have ever tried to submit a calendar idea or have ever been an editor for a community calendar, you know what a pain in the butt it is to actually collect 
the data and use it and present it in a useful way. Well, the idea is to have it as easy to submit a calendar information to your publication as it is to upload a photo to Flickr. So, for example, I'm walking down the hallways of San Jose State, I see, hey, free barbecue. I take a picture of it and I submit it to the calendar uh, website, uh, your publication. There are two users for Calendar Shot, the person who has the calendar uh, information and wants to publicize it, and the, the editors who are collecting the information. And uh, for the end user, it makes it really easy and simple to just submit their calendar and it would disperse it not only to your publication but to three other publications for example for free uh, let me show you so the way the the benefit for a community calendar editor is it actually provides a an additional revenue stream um, for example uh, the end user or the community member would submit the um, would submit the calendar event, and the software would help disperse it to three potentially rival publications. Uh, for example, around here, uh, the Daily Paper, the Alt Weekly, uh, and a an online robust calendar. If the community member wants to submit to more, uh, they would uh, pay a nominal fee. For example, thirty cents each. And I know in the Bay Area, there's all kinds of different different. Um, community calendars, either in print or online, community bloggers, uh, niche publications, uh, and the software would help organize each of these submissions to exactly what the different publications require if uh, SF Chronicle prefers a web submitted calendar item, it would do that. If uh, another publication, an older publication, prefers fax, it would also do that. If the idea is robust and, and uh, there's interest, uh, another uh, way I want to develop this more is to use the community calendar almost like a phone book where you list everything but then highlight the sponsored. So uh, you would be able to go to other websites like Laughing Squid or uh, Upcoming and and the software would be able to auto-detect calendars, on, uh, calendar items on other websites. Uh, it could be in the iCal uh, format, the .ics format, which is what Google Calendar and Microsoft Outlook use, or it could auto-detect dates and times and locations and pull that information into your database. Now, from your big fat database, you'd be able, you'd also be able to through a an InDesign plugin to be able to take that data and format it into a perfectly formatted um, print page. And um, uh, the 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 <coughs> point is, if we want, if you wanted to monetize your community calendar and, and include sponsored listings, that would be done if you were a, a community newspaper, it would be done in the classifieds department and uh, then passed on to the editor so they would have their editor's picks uh, aside so there's still a wall between the advertising and the ed editorial. Um, to develop the entire thing, um, I am saying, I, I am Estimating that with a senior programmer and a designer, and possibly a junior programmer or another marketer, um, give it about four months to get a working product uh, available. So um, that would be that be it. Questions? I have a couple of questions. Um, I'm curious about whether or not the 30 cents means that you pay for each calendar that it's submitted to or you get as many make sense? As many makes sense, exactly. Okay. So if you're doing a free barbecue for students, you don't want to submit it to the business journal. Um, and each different publication would be an extra 30 cents. So the, at the end user would choose, well, would this, would this work? I, I 
actually have another question. What do you have you thought about spam and people submitting to irrelevant yes. sites? Yes, um, I have. I have thought about it. Spam is always an issue. Um, the way I want uh, the way I want to structure this is to make it um, as as easy for people to submit, but also as easy for people to edit. So um, if you've got an entire listing of calendars that have, that uh, calendar information that's come in, an editor can just swipe it, you know, with a click and say that's that spam, and that would also detect, um, you know, certain certain keywords. Also, not there's there's straight up spam, and then there's also, uh, for example, a hair salon has a 10% off um, calendar event that goes to 2011. Um, and that would also not be allowed and be easy. <laughs> and, and be easy. Thank you. Excuse me. <laughs> Wrapped in a stairway. <laughs> 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 She wins. She wins. <laughs> um, okay. So, so I have a, a few questions, um, and obviously, it's very early. So, yes. You know. But um, you know, one of the things about what you're proposing is that you you have two audiences that you need to cultivate, that you need to get engaged. And as you know, folks who've ever tried to do a startup knows, it's really hard just to get the first one, mm -hmm. much less two. So um, you're offering some value to the event organizer. You're offering some value to the publisher. And in theory, you're going to need to balance some tension between who actually is getting more value out of the system as versus who you actually need to have in there first to attract the other. Like what's the order? Right. It's the eBay thing, right? Buyers and sellers. So so how are you thinking about that issue? Like who do you need first? Who do you think gets more value from having it? Who's got the bigger problem? All of that. At, at first, the priority would need to be on the publishers. And the reason why I had this idea is so that whether or not people are submitting, they could still glean and cultivate the entire listing um, as simply as possible, as streamlined as possible, and using already existing formats. Um, you know, the iCal is one. They're also developing other uh, others, and um, using, you know, uh, Evernote and the new Document Cloud also have you know uh, text reading uh, capabilities for for uh, photos so it would be um, it it would be a, a student for example um, if I was on a, a student newspaper and we wanted to create a community calendar I'd just send one of the rookie <coughs> reporters out across the campus take pictures and send it in so they would be the data collectors right. so the, the then that's gonna lose your revenue because you someone would have paid otherwise to submit it right right it, it, it the, at first, the point is to make sure your calendar is robust enough and mm -hmm. complete enough that people would be engaged. The, the drawing point of having one central point to disperse immediately is that's not readily available right now. So you would have a competitive advantage if I was, if I was a community event organizer. Um, and I knew that all I needed to do is send it to you, and it would disperse between at least three or four major outlets. Um, you would have the, the advantage. Okay. That's good. I think we can move on. Thank you. Thank you. So I'm going to I'm going to time these with my iPhone. So when you hear the little doorbell go off, it's not someone calling me. It's 30 seconds left, okay? Nani, you want to go next? You want to, okay, you're fourth? That's what I'm looking at. Oh, I thought of. You want to go next? Okay, all right. Number two team doesn't mind. <laughs> what I'd love is to steal one of the bottles of water. <coughs> one second. Hi, I'm Nani Della Pena, and this is Tom Grasti, and we're here to present what we call the Stroom Solution. 
Uh, as everybody in this room is keenly aware, journalists have to retool in the digital age, and we're offering something that allows uh, journalists to get timely, relevant, and responsive visual journalism stories onto the web. I know personally about the difficulties of this uh, type of operation, uh, and I hold an example, a story I wrote for the New York Times last year on how most fish talk. The story made it to the top 10 most emailed list, um, and uh, one of the reasons why that happened was most likely because they also cut a web video for the story that allowed people to really understand what we're talking about here. We didn't put the audio up. That's right, skip it. Anyway, I'm going to move on because we've got a technical problem here with the audio. But basically, it gives you a basic idea that some of these clips were, were necessary for this piece. But um, the New York Times did not give me a budget on this. And not only that, they called me on a Thursday to say the piece was running on Monday because there had been no time peg. It had been sitting in the repository for quite a few months. And um, they, with no budget, I mean, I had really no collaborators to help me get this piece together very quickly. So I had to do things like call Cornell University and ask them to film one of their professors and then send me the tape. Um, and of course it had to be FedEx, so I lost a day. And they sent it to me on a pro, uh, a pro DVD tape, DV tape, and I had to then get it transferred so I could cut it in my DV consumer deck. Um, and you know, similarly, that professor you just saw, one of his buddies shot him for me on a digital format, but then when he, digital camera, and then when he, um, uploaded the file to me. Of course, it was for a PC, and I was working on a Mac, and I had to transfer the file. So all these kind of cumbersome things led to what we're calling the Stream Solution. And um, we're really trying to meet those issues straight on. Um, first off, critically, it offers a method of collaboration where we have a permissions matrix, where you can collaborate with everybody, with just your friends, or you can create groups, the New York Times, or even a micro group, the New York Times Fish Story Group. Okay. Everybody in that group can upload the video to a central repository where all the video can be seen in one place on this browser-based solution. We also have partnered with Kaltura to create an editor. So then that video can be remixed, cut, edited right in the browser. And Kaltura is a wonderful, a wonderful partner to have because the tool itself is very robust. Um, we also are very much keen about offering solutions to get this stuff out very quickly. So let's say you've got two reporters in the field working on the same story. One's doing the interview, one's shooting the B-roll. They're both uploading the content to a third person who's been crafting maybe some back material and they're ready to edit it. They get an alert in their email, they get an alert on their phone, hey, the new video's up for you to start cutting with. Um, we allow you to not only exchange comments through traditional text comments, but also if somebody's cut a piece and I need to fix it, I think there's a problem, I just remix it. And then that exchange of comment goes through the actual video. You're, you're really having a conversation through the remix process, and then we have forums to provide tips uh, for users. And finally, we're talking about this as being a space where you'll be able to stream your video straight to the site, forget about expensive satellite trucks, just use your your, your, your camera or your phone and get it straight in. Now I'm going to introduce Tom who's going to talk to you about our business plan. Okay. If you can just do the thing, that's cool. All right. um, so we have a two-pronged strategy. We're going to reach out to uh, both aspiring and existing journalists. Give me the microphone. The aspiring and existing journalists. The existing journalists are, um, I'm sorry, the aspiring journalists are obviously in the journalism schools and college students. And we've already been uh, beta testing this, and we did this with the new school last fall. And we're going to be moving over to USC Annenberg and working uh, with them in the spring. The second initial target market is media companies. Uh, these are folks that are perhaps already in the print business trying to move into digital or already have pre-existing digital entity and we're going to be adding a platform that makes it much more community based. Let's look at our adoption and the scale up, the way we can scale up with this. What you're looking at is uh, these two charts. The red accounts, there's the educational accounts and the corporate accounts. And on the educational side, uh, as you see, as we scale up, uh, we'll go from 26 schools to 74 to 98, 
and you'll see then that the student accounts go up exponentially, obviously, because you get one school, you get many students. Let's look at the financial part. 30 seconds. So we'll be able to go up, uh, scale up financially, as well as with our marketplace, as you can see here. Again, the schools at the bottom, the companies at the top. So Stroom is a solution, and kind of what we like to say there is just because you don't have the shot doesn't mean that someone else doesn't. Thank you. Trying to avoid the questions. <laughs> That's the thing. You guys are only going to get harder questions. <laughs> I, I, I just have a, a quick one. Where does the name come from? Stroom? Oh, Stroom? It, Stroom is, a, is the Danish, a derivative of the Danish verb, which means to flow, as in to flow of ideas and such. So, um, so let me just make sure that I, that I, that I understand um, how much of the code or what, what have you put on top of Cultura? Like what's the part you've actually had to build? Um, we've built quite a bit of stuff that goes on top of the Kaltura, including the permissions matrix, which they don't have. They don't have the alert system. They don't have um, uh, the whole sense of the way that the collaboration of the subgroups, of the different groups to bring them together. And siloing off the content is a really critical part that they don't offer. And I have to tell you, a, a lot of what Kaltura offers, it's a great tool. But they do not offer you a way to integrate out of the out of the box. You have got to really be able to do all that robust integration yourself. And we have a, we have a working alpha version up. And, and are you hosting then all the video, everything that people are working on is on your server? No, the video itself gets hosted by the Kaltura, which would make this excellent because they're already dealing with scalability in terms of tons of video content and all the calls for video. We host all the rest of the content management system to con to control the whole um, uh, whoever our white label or organization and we can pri and we can silo off content for, mm -hmm. for proprietary purposes mm -hmm. so so how much does it actually cost someone to, to use your system and is it like per project is it just a subscription all you can eat and am I you know if I'm the user am I paying you and Kaltura like yeah. what how does that well work? The, the, the short answer to that is there will always be a free version, a free, a free version. There will be a subscription version, which will have a little more robust features. When we move into the schools, there will be a license for the school and then for the additional students. And when we go to the corporate solution, it's going to be an enterprise solution where it's a larger setup fee because it will be more customization. But, but how much? Oh, how much? Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, we're playing with the numbers right now. Yeah. Um, I mean, so, like, what's a student no, 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 have to come up with? Oh, oh, a student would just come up with five bucks a month. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah. And then, and then, depending on how much robust we've got, a, we literally have a, a Chinese menu worth, of, worth uh, so people can select from based on what this fits their needs in terms of what costs they want to spend. Mm -hmm. And so why not use some of the existing user, you know, like there's all these consumer tools for doing similar things with groups to create content. Um, is there a reason why folks would want to use you instead of just using the consumer tools, which are usually pretty cheap or free? Yeah, well, you can have your consumer tool like an iMovie, but it doesn't give you the option to collaborate and remix each other. You, you could use iMovie and stick it up there and then call your buddy or whatever and say, I've got my shot up there. And then they have to download it and then remix it on their iMovie, whereas this you can do on the fly from anywhere. You could go to an internet cafe if you've got a problem and you can go right under the browser, you know, any browser on an internet cafe and remix it right in the browser and get a hold of your contacts, let them know and they'll be alerted wherever they are as well. And there's also something very quickly we didn't get into in the presentation, which is every time people upload content, depending on how they permission it, by and large it will be put in a large community clip pool, which means that if everyone in the room had uploaded something, everyone in the room would have access to it. There's no other place on the web where you can really go and immediately get that rights cleared and free. Um, I have a question about, is, is Kaltura, which I'm not familiar with, is that already a site that provides collaboration or is it that you would overlay collaboration on their existing video Their browser based system? Uh, their browser based editing, you know, remixing system, but they are not, they do not have all these collaboration tools that we're okay. providing. And so uh, I wanted to follow up because uh, so so Kaltura, it already exists and it allows browser-based editing. You guys are putting a layer on top of that. Um, what is the uh, well? One, you, you mentioned you, you are working with them. They're they're fully aware of it. They they're embracing it. And uh, what is the, the cost of the development for all this? And what is it being built in? Are you building on top of whatever Kaltura is built in? Yeah, Kaltura's. But we're using the Drupal module at the uh, and so we're building this in Drupal. 
And so we're using the Drupal content management system, but we're customizing a lot of the modules to make this all work. Right. And, um, and you we're know, getting the best price possible. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll leave it at that. <laughs> all right. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot. Okay, moving right along. Um, I think Sunny, you are next. Oh, man, whatever. <laughs> you can go. Yeah. Sure. Yep. What <coughs> goes? She's got your deck ready, so you yeah. that means you're on. Uh, that's what it looks like. I'm Sonny Mayuba, I'm from the Sacramento Press, and I want to thank you guys for being here and applaud my uh, fellow startups. Uh, Sacramento Press is an online, hyper-local news and information site, and we're modeled after a, a newspaper. Uh, we've got sections, uh, daily news that comes in and is featured on the, on the homepage. Hello. But our home page changes, our, our front page changes daily. <laughs> what, what's happening? Might be the arrow key. I mean, the left okay. arrow. It's just a tease. Yeah, this is it. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> Appreciate it. <laughs> so we're a hyper-local news and information uh, where we are a mix of uh, paid editors, a small staff of paid editors, and citizen journalists. Um, I think that we want to escape yeah. you and uh, yeah, try, we There we go. That's perfect. That's perfect. You guys can see that. See my handiwork. Okay, so like I said, our front page doesn't change just once a day. It changes every day as stories flow in. You can see here three minutes ago. Uh, 15 hours ago, 16, 16 hours ago. You know, our content focus is on local and hyper-local news specific to Sacramento, and our product truly is community and interaction. We're local and we're transformative. So stories come in, and our stories are told over time. This happens to be a story on uh, medical marijuana and medical dispensaries, hot topic in California, uh, both socially and fiscally, and a huge topic in Sacramento. So the stories come in, users can uh, you know, rate it up or down, of course flag it and moderate it. But then they can join the conversation. So this isn't strictly just a comments page, this is a conversation. So this is where others, including, and we encourage our editors and authors to come in and reply to, if there's an enlightening comment or some sort of comment, not only rate the comment, flag the comment, but reply to the comment. So it truly becomes a conversation online. It's pretty phenomenal. But this is sort of the second way we set our edge, and this is really exciting. So if you like this story on medical marijuana dispensaries, you may click the storyline, and then you're going to quickly discover you're actually on story uh, entry five of a, of a seven story series. So we've created this essential virtual archive of content, because stories really are told over time. So rather than just a bold reference in print or in broadcast, we have the whole storyline based from this author and all the conversation that's gone along with that. And of course, all the content is based around tags. We all, all know how tag, tags work. And as tags start to proliferate through our site, then our editors can create a splash page based around that topic or thread. And it creates uh, quite a bit of interaction there. So we're the mix between citizen journalism and traditional media. On the left is David Watts Barton. He's an editor with traditional sensibility, a ton of experience, editorial scrutiny, and he and his small staff of three editors have the ability to chase stories down. But then we enlist citizen journalists, community contributors who are passionate and it makes us scalable. Uh, they're experts in their field and of course, you know, some wisdom of the masses. So all these people and this concept driving content, what has it done for us? Well, um, when we launched in October uh, late October of 08, we had a whopping 295 unique visitors. Um, oop, hello. So that's our growth curve. Uh, September closed on the 30th at 46,000 plus uh, on uniques and 62,575 on visits. Our business model is getting paid. So that on the left is Jeff Samick. He's our editor-in-chief and co-founder. That's him sending out his first set of invoices and getting his first checks. Very exciting for any startup, as we all know. Okay, so this is our business model. I've got to stress, it's an evolving business model. Um, <laughs> exactly. So display banner advertising. That's our core. 
okay? We're a newspaper. But we also have created a tag bundle system, so all our content is tagged, right? Well, guess what? Our editor, our technologists have built similar analogous to a Google, Ad, Google AdWords system where our clients can buy tag bundles from us and go to like content that they want to be displayed with. Community marketing. We're out marketing ourselves, so we subsidize that and sell it to our uh, clients. Social media engagement, this is a big part of what we do right now, and it's probably very popular in this room. We handle that re online reputation for our clients. Event planning and partnerships, I mean, there's nothing more community driven than people actually getting together. Um, of course, digital strategy, so now our clients are starting to ask us about digital strategies for them on a strictly local basis. And then we hold workshops and we have some community assets. So in workshops we hold journalism contests, I brought you some samples, uh, journalism workshops, blogging workshops to make our writers, our contributors, and the community a little bit better at what they do in reporting. And then community assets, these are like neighborhood associations, community centers, things that we can actually be involved with and of course monetize. We're the intersection of physical and virtual. This is a shot of our office here in Sacramento, on 5th and I, the Amtrak station. You're welcome to come. It's a free space and we invite the public in. This is a sample of some of our current clients. We have small things like little tiny yoga studios you've never heard of and then large uh, you know, car dealerships and whatnot. And earlier this week, we landed a one-year deal with Maloof Sports Entertainment, the owner of the Sacramento Kings. It's huge. It's a paying deal. All these are paying deals, by the way. Um, and uh, on my way here, uh, we had a, a meeting with an agency, and we got Land Rover for three months. It's very exciting. So what does that equate to in revenue? It equates to this. We launched our first uh, revenue. It was $400 a month. Now we've landed, uh, we closed September at over $10,000 a month. And our projections look very good. We're very involved in our local associations. Our leadership group is Ben and Jeff and Joel, our technologists. And is this concept scalable? Well, absolutely. Based on this concept and a local online ad network where we actually bring in all the valid blogs and sites of the town and package those up and sell them, plus our technology instances, which is a proprietary, proprietary software in our business infrastructure, we can elicit a local passionate leader we can get an institutional investor, and of course us, Castle Press, and we can scale this in your city. So thank you very much. Let's open it up to questions. I'm curious about where you get your content. Where we get our content. So we get it from two places. Um, we steal it. Oh, no, I'm kidding. No, I'm kidding. No, no. We don't. We, we get our content from our staff of editors. So we have Jeff Samick, our editor-in-chief. David Watts Barton, our managing editor, and three staff reporters, okay. and some freelance reporters. They're, they're getting their content, but then we also get our content from the 590 and growing community contributors. These are citizens of Sacramento that write. write. So they're writing. And they're like amateur blog writers. Posts they're free. Or something. They're, um, they're writing blog posts, or they're giving you photos, or. Yeah, they're using our site. Thing. Yeah, they're using strictly our user interface and our site to write stories. Good. So I like the idea that you're bundling the, the tag piece and monetizing that. Um, it's one of the early things that generated revenue for sites like Flickr and, I don't know, Delicious. Um, but the tag cloud, I would say, is not uh, usually so interesting for, for people. I think um, it, 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 finding pages through search engine, you know, ser search engine optimization and figuring out how to monetize those pages on an individual basis, uh -huh. treating tags like topics is much more interesting. Yeah, and, and if, that was if, really if you have time, I'll, let's fire up the site. I, I can, we can do a live demo. <laughs> can I get more time? Okay. No, and uh, that tag cloud image I showed you actually was our tag cloud expanded. The tag cloud is not uh, in our UI you have to activate it to expand it. So that was just for this presentation purpose only. So it is exactly how you described it. So I so say you're middle you're in the med middle of the ages so far because you're not a young student. So I'll give you a little bit of a question, but not too <laughs> Hey, much wait harder. a minute. How do you know? So uh, I'm just going based on you know genetics. I'm 19. So um, so unfortunately or unfortunately for you, um, one of the investments uh -oh. I was part of. Um, I don't know if you know a company called Backfence, um, which I was part of. Yeah, which I was part of <laughs> when I was at Omidyar Network. I was I was responsible for Backfence. Um, so uh, so I have some some scar tissue there and, uh, and experience. Experience. And now um, I'm here for you. And now you're here for me. So, um, so on the one hand, uh, I do appreciate. By the way, thank you so much for including things like how you're going to, you know, actually do get your sales and get your yeah. customers in. Those are real numbers, by the, the way. Just for uh, so I guess some <laughs> of the the, the big 
big problem with a lot of citizen journalism has always been around the cost of not only the content acquisition, but also just you know building awareness, getting the content you know brought in from citizen journalists. Um, how do you scale that in addition to you know the normal audience customer acquisition, right? And sort of managing those costs appropriately because grassroots marketing is really expensive on, is. on a per person basis, you know, brought into sure. the site. So how are you thinking about acquiring those journalists, you know, getting them acquired, you know, um, and then how much it's going to cost you compared to what you can then get for that content? Sure. No, that's that's a fantastic question. Thanks for a lot for that. <laughs> <laughs> medium. It was only yeah. a medium yeah. question. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that was medium. Ouch. <laughs> oh, yeah, you handled the money. I forgot. <laughs> Okay, so um, I, I'm, I can't dissect a cost per acquisition at this point. Yeah. At this to. point, yeah. and we need to. Um, and maybe with your help, we can do that. <laughs> um, but, but I will tell you that um, what, what we're trying to do right now is foster uh, community and goodwill and create value in other ways than money. Okay, And that's not just buzzwords. I'm, I mean, really, it's not. So one huge way we've been attracting writers is by holding these workshops I'm, workshops I'm talking about. So rather than say, hey look, we're MySpace, we created this great social network, we want user generated content, you know, give us content. You know, we, we say, we have hard, hard news, we have community geo news written by some editors and some concerned citizens or activists. Mm -hmm. And we want to put you in the same space as them, not only virtually, so online, and you may be featured, which does have value, for budding journalists, um, but also in the physical world. So we hold workshops. It's been really one of our best ways uh, into to making them better writers, uh, better journalists, and taking you know a guy like our editor who worked for the Sacramento Bee for 25 years and now is in this new media space, and him saying, okay, I know where you're at. Let me help you become a better. So we're paying them in a different way. Um, and truly, uh, it's been viral at this point. It's been viral. Um so, so I'm, I'm, I've, I've actually seen the Sacramento Press before. I, I, I like it. I'm, I'm curious because uh, at the end of this, you said, you know, well, we can do this and we can bring it to your town. What What is the goal here in this specific pitch? Are you guys trying to sort of be go head to head with the Sacramento B, or are you trying to take this to other towns as well? Because those are two very different things. Sure, uh, not the first. So we're huge fans of the bee. You know, I, I take the bee at my house actually, and um, it pains me sometimes when I look at. You know, there's a lot of news aggregation in the printed version, um, and I have a lot of good friends with the bee. And the bee sends us about six to ten percent of our traffic, depending on when it is. We're added on their lingo spot. We're allies with the bee. Uh, we cover different things. So no, we're not trying to go head to head with the bee. Um, the goal at this point, sort of short term, is to, you know, get the Sacramento press more entrenched, and you know, keep that growth curve growing in the right way and keep our clients growing in the right way, uh, providing a value equation for our clients to make money. Um, in Sacramento, improve the concept there. So we're going to create this, what I talked about, loan, Sloan, the Sacramento Local Online Advertising Network. So that's our next step. So we can actually create this sort of, uh, I hate to use this word, but sort of template, this sort of model that can work. And then yes, we would like to uh, take it to other places, you know, do the Berkeley Press or do the uh, you know, Nashville Press or, or, and so on. Yeah. Last question. Um, are you a Drupal site? No, it's it's completely built from the ground up. So you a proprietary platform that you guys built yourself? <laughs> it's already ours is already paid for. <laughs> yeah, we have taken zero uh, outside investment, so it's all self funded. Yeah. Okay. okay? Thanks. All right. Thank you very much. And I uh, brought you guys uh, some samples here of this. If you pass them down. It's Okay, let's see, who's next? Uh, uh, Stefano? Yeah, Stefano. We have an international uh, participant who is at Berkeley for the year. For the um, International Visiting uh, Scholar Program. So I'm um, the only competitor which is, uh, who is from uh, other country than the other than the US. I'm from Italy actually. So if you don't understand uh, all my presentation, it's because of my bad uh, Italian accent or because of my bad slides. So uh, we are talk going to talk about uh, something which is uh, very, very strange and old-fashioned nowadays, it's investigative journalism. So um, I represent a, a non-profit association which is based in Italy, which um, is um, studying new uh, business models to um, uh, combine uh, the quality of old-fashioned uh, journalism 
with the powerful uh, distribution reach of uh, new web journalism. So uh, we are negotiating a grant with the European Commission in order to get funded to, uh, to um, realize this project, which for, for the time being is just an idea. Um, so as you can read, uh, we try to, uh, through this project, to, um, to deal with the uh, two main problems of investigative journalism. Investigative journalism is very um, time costly, so uh, we need, we need, you need money to, uh, to produce an investigative story, and uh, you need a lot of uh, information input, so you need the contribution from uh, the outside. So what we propose is to use um, the uh, widespread reach of uh, mobile technology and text messages to deal with these two problems. So please have a look at the, the, right, the red uh, sentence, which is very meaningful. I mean, we are trying to promote quality journalism, not just uh, high-speed uh, news distribution. So we can go to the uh, next one. This? Yeah. Okay. So um, what, we, what we do first is um, creating our uh, pitching um, our um, uh, ti story titles through uh, social networks, so Facebook, Twitter, and our, our uh, homepage. So uh, then uh, those uh, uh, page fans or uh, contacts or friends who like the titles, they click on the titles and they're redirected to uh, the news organization website, so our website, yeah? So on the website, they can sign up, and the while signing up, they can subscribe to text message service. Um, those, uh, those who subscribe for the text message service, they receive a story pitch. So the story pitch is not the title, it's, it's a kind of abstract. It says what, what the story will be about. But the story doesn't exist yet, nobody has ever produced. We're just telling what kind of stories we want to do. So the title is, is very short, the, the pitch is, is a longer text. This, um, this uh, story pitch is sent to all subscribers via text message. So subscribers who receive the, the story pitch in their uh, uh, text message inbox, they can reply. So they can just send a blank uh, reply, or they can type in something like, I like your ideas, please, uh, please uh, produce it. Uh, we want to see publish, publish it in uh, some media. And uh, while doing so, actually, they commission to, uh, to the, the, our organization the production of this uh, of the full story. Um, the, co the, the cost of each uh, text message reply from uh, the users is credited to the bank account of uh, the organization which is managing the website. Okay, so it's a micropayment which is flowing from uh, the mobile mobile telephone users to uh, the, 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 the website, the organization which is managing the website, which is supposed to produce the stories. Um, users, apart from replying to support the story, they can also send their uh, tips, suggestions, information, whatever they know about the issue, which is the object of an investigation. So they can actually send uh, their um, contribution. And uh, in turn, they can also receive uh, updates on the, on the making of the story. Okay, so when, uh, as, if, as the, the, the freelance journalist or the news organization is producing the story, it's going ahead with the story production, it can send updates via text message. <coughs> so, uh, journalists, they produce um, the full story uh, with the help of um, uh, tips, of ideas, suggestions uh, offered by uh, uh, users, and uh, they get paid with the total amount of money of the SMS reply credits, which was raised through uh, this communication process. So then, once the story is uh, totally produced, so it's, uh, I mean, it can be online, a story summary is published on the, our website of uh, whatever news organization which is using our business model. And then uh, there will be a link at the bottom of the story summary, which is linking uh, users, readers, to the website of a major online news organization which publish the whole story. So actually we want to produce stories, but we want to distribute and provide them to major uh, um, news outlets. 30 seconds. Yeah. Then the last, the last uh, stage, uh, the website, our, our, our website, send uh, to subscribers via classical means of, uh, of uh, public reach, so email, social networks, and also text message. The link to the web page where they can see 
the full story to which they contributed and that they, they, they funded through micropayments via text message. Uh, I prepare a Q&A <laughs> to help you to suggest you the good questions to, that I can answer. <laughs> Normally, these are, the, these are the questions that I'm, I usually answer, so I just uh, got inspired by them. But if you have more interesting questions than the one I wrote down, so please. I have different questions, actually. So that's yeah. nice. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so, um, so I guess there's... Uh, one question, which is really a little bucket of questions, so I'm just going to throw them all out there, and cause I think you'll have one answer that does all three questions. Um, and so, uh, I guess I'm most curious about what the user experience is going to be like. So, you know, and that, and sort of the pieces that jumped out at me is, you know, number one, how long is that round trip experience from when I get the text message that says, mm -hmm. "Hey, here's two lines. Are you interested?" And I put some money in. How long am I waiting? to get a story back because I think especially on a cell phone people are very used to an immediate response yeah. right so that's one and then the other one is um, uh, you know what happens if you know only a couple of people pay do they get no story like what what happens to them <laughs> so I think uh, question two uh, one two and three uh, I suppose to answer to your answer but I will give you a more customized answer yes I would like answer. a more I would like a more specific yeah. answer so, uh, <laughs> so first of all the issue of, of, of finance I mean what, what what happens with the money provided by the only two no 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 what happens if I'm the only one who wants yeah, yeah. the story Does it, do I still yeah, get the story what happens to your money yeah, the money you put uh, yeah, in the micropayments yeah. so actually um, we have some um, uh, high tech companies in Europe uh, and uh, one of them is the World Wide Web, World Wide Web Consortium which are developing uh, new um, um, uh, uh, tools which uh, integrate uh, web, web with uh, text message, which actually allow to, uh, to send uh, free text messages, which means that uh, the credit of the text message is credited to our bank account. But it's not, uh, it's not paid mm -hmm. as long as uh, the um, sub subscribers receive a final notification informing them that the store is fully fundraised. How long do you have? How long it takes? So no, so I might text you today, like you know, a dollar, but then I get the story in a year. Like, how long could it take? Uh, it's not to take in here. No, yeah. we want to do it without before going to re retire. So, yeah. so actually, what how, how, what, <laughs> what 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 what, what I, I, the red sentence which was in my first page is quite meaningful. We want we 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 address uh, users who want quality. They don't want mm -hmm. just speed fast yeah. uh, speed uh, broad, uh, broadcasting. So it will take between uh, two weeks and a month. Okay, and then after a month, you'll say never mind. Too late, or you might still. No, no, no. Be. We, we, no. If the, <laughs> the sto if the story gets fundraised, it will yeah. be uh, within, within uh, two weeks. If uh, after two weeks it's not fundraised, we just uh, put it aside. Right. Uh, we pitch Move another on. story. Yeah. Okay. But the, the, the story will be produced within a month, and um, uh, actually, uh, uh, I mean, maybe you're interested in knowing why people that you should subscribe such a service, maybe. Yeah. What would be the interest interest of people in the subscribing okay. such service? Yeah, no, no that's answers my question. Okay. I'm, I'm curious about um, the, the stories. How do you know what to suggest to people to pay for? Mm -hmm. And are you choosing things that you think that they might want to pay for, or are you choosing the things that journalistically may need to be reported? Yeah. And how do you match those? Yeah. It's going to be the Enquirer. Desires. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Is, are we, will we end up with a National Enquirer? In so Edwards? actually... Um, <laughs> Actually, through a social network like Twitter and Facebook, yeah. you can uh, uh, group your uh, fans, your friends, into thematic, uh, thematic categories, so you, you know actually what people like, which is issues they like, okay? I mean, you, you, have, you, have, you have thematic groups, you have thematic networks on Facebook, so you know actually what, what some categories of users they like. Mm -hmm. uh, they like. So actually, what we do is uh, we, we, can, we, we are inspired by a kind of sentiment analysis or what the users are talking about mm. in the social networks, and we pitch stories which are related to these issues. We customize our story pitch. We don't uh, invent our story pitch just for our, uh, how do you say, pleasure, but we, we want to match the story pitch on to the, to the um, uh, concrete interest of different thematic uh, users, users' categories. So, so what happens if there's a story that hasn't been reported yet um, and the users don't know that it could be interesting or could be really important. How do you... Actually, the users, uh, uh, some groups of, uh, on Facebook, they are dealing with uh, human rights, environment, and energy. So actually, we pitch stories on these broad thematic areas. Okay. Not, not on stories. Not specific. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Okay. All right, we're, we got one All right, we've got one last one.
Okay. Not le last but not least, uh, Josh and um, Shorter. Shorter. Okay. Shorter's good. Take it away. Have this ready. Hello, folks. My name is Josh Wilson. I'm a journalist from here in San Francisco. You can tell from all the long hair. <laughs> I'm uh, also the founder of Newsdesk.org, and uh, I'd like to invite you to join me in creating a new future for professional journalism. The project is called Local, Your Local News Desk, and you can make it happen in your own hometown. It's a plan to build a new public media network of independent online news bureaus that can share resources and multiply the impacts of their coverage. This is a peer-to-peer -peer model for news production. This is something that does not exist currently for journalists. Your local news desk is an open platform for professional journalism. For, for professional journalism. It provides editorial standards, an easily localized brand, an adaptable WordPress template, and growing online distribution. To prevent duplication of services and keep the bureaus focused on pure journalism, we also have a shared back office here in San Francisco to handle all the business needs. Independent Arts and Media is our parent organization. It's a fiscal sponsor with 10 years experience providing nonprofit financial oversight to independent media and culture projects. Each local news desk bureau will run on a hybrid business model that combines earned income and philanthropy. That means we're going to go after individual donors and foundation grants. We want to create an endowment and we love crowdfunding. Um, we're also going to be syndicating great articles to undercapitalized commercial newsrooms that want alternatives to expensive wire services. Our content demo is called News You Might Have Missed. It's a method and a set of best practices for covering important but overlooked news. What we do is break down national and global issues at the local and regional level and unearth significant stories, context, and insight that would otherwise be glossed over or overlooked entirely. This method is easily adapted to local information needs, as are other news features we've developed here in the Bay Area, such as the election truthiness report, <laughs> which uh, fact checks political advertisements, and uh, also the toxic tour, uh, which documents communities and pollution. You can all do this where you live, and here's how it works. Journalists in El Paso, for example, would organize around our nonprofit template. They'd build an advisory board from the regional SPJ chapters and local J schools. And they'd work with the community to develop coverage priorities. They'd act independently, but look for local media and nonprofit partners to co produce and cross promote coverage. For startup funding, Newsdesk El Paso would tap into local philanthropic support, plus any national resources that we can bring to bear. They'd also link up with local Newsdesk bureaus in other regions. They'd coordinate their coverage and develop thematically related material that could be syndicated nationally to earn income. And that's really important. This is, a, as much as it's a nonprofit uh, model, it's an entrepreneurial nonprofit that wants to get over the part about holding the hand out to uh, foundations. Social capital is the key enabler that will make this all possible. There are a lot of unemployed journalists out there looking for something to do. I got that from newspaperdeathwatch.com. All these journalists are professionals. They're full of ideas, energy, and collaborative potential, and they're learning how to self-organize. Your local news desk uses a, the decentralized internet to help activate this social capital. Thousands of journalists working in communities nationwide, a massively parallel peer network that can reinvent local and regional journalism around the nation. It is ambitious, but it's the kind of idea folks can grab hold of and make their own. And once that happens, it becomes self-propagating, an infrastructure that can truly advance journalism as a practice, and thus journalism for democracy. So more than anything else that happens today, I want to give this to you. Uh, take it home. Start a local news desk bureau. Everything that we've built and everything that we've learned about nonprofit journalism and nonprofit fundraising is available to you. And uh, I know there's so much that you all can teach us. That's the point. This is something we're going to create together. If you are a newspaper publisher or editor, raise your hand. We're taking news you might have missed. Thank you very much. I will talk to each and every one of you. <clears throat> We're taking news you might have missed daily in a few months with the support of the Ethics and Excellence in Journalism Foundation. They gave us $25,000.
So as Susan mentioned, we're slightly over the limit. Um, this content will be available to you for publication first as a free trial and later as a very affordable syndicated service. So please do come say howdy. Um, I also have some stickers and such like. I have 2,000 stickers from stickerguy.com. So uh, thank you kindly for listening. <laughs> Are you going to validate the quality of the pieces that come through the, the Bureau in any way? Yeah, ab st standards is absolutely essential. And I actually would say one of the biggest challenges, I think, for this project would to be to, to keep standards consistent across the bureaus. Mm -hmm. Now, because it's peer-driven, the journalists have to set those standards. And I think that that kind of buy-in, that idea of peer review, makes, it, makes quality control uh, sort of bred into the project. Mm -hmm. Okay, we're going to kick you guys out. Thank you all for presenting. That's all? That's yeah. Now let's, let's move on. We're going to ask the audience to give us some feedback as soon as we ask all our presenters to step outside. To do the very difficult thing of only voting once. Think about the idea that your vote is a vote for attention and for resources. And though there's something really interesting and good about each concept, you're going to have to be the um, strict person here and limit yourself to saying, this is the one I would put at the top. And we're going to do that through a show of hands. And then we'll confer among ourselves quickly, bring everyone back and announce who um, the winner was. Okay. okay, so first, calendar shot. Show of hands, calendar shot. Okay. Stroom, number two, the second one you saw. Stroom. Okay. Third up was Sacramento Press. Okay. The fourth entry was the Stefano's mobile crowdsourced investigative journalism project. Okay. Uh, anybody else have a hand for that? No. And the last entry, Josh's news desk. With what you guys are. are we going to talk amongst yeah. ourselves? Yeah. Do we want to talk amongst ourselves publicly with these guys, or just? I think we just got to So, so I, I think yeah. we're going to talk to you as we decide. So we kind of have a little bit of transparency here. Yeah. Going to tell us who won. Well, we we're have to vote. We right we now. we can tell you we can tell you who what the votes were, and we yeah. will. But I think we're going to have a discussion first, and then we'll share everybody's vote. We're over our time, so we got to kind of make yeah. it. Oh, all right, let's go fast. Okay. Uh, okay. Well, so let me share what the group votes were. Should I do that? Sure. sure. Okay. So we have um, uh, seven for calendar shot, thirty-seven for Stroom, thirty for the uh, Sacramento Press, two for the Mobile, and twenty-four for News Desk. Obviously, not everybody voted, but most people did. Um, let's hear from these folks. Um, do you want to talk about what you would rate first and why, and then come to some consensus? Sure. David, how about you? I mean, uh, me personally, uh, in the the geek in me uh, liked Stroom um, in terms of. I mean, you can sort of it. You know, I, I could see that being the easiest to market because that is a severe problem. If anybody actually has dealt with uh, collaboratively editing video. Don't try it. It's a pain in the butt. Yeah, but there, there are. I mean, and this is sort of the weird background. So my husband has a business that does this. Oh. They have so much trouble getting customers. I mean, the product is good. I've yeah. seen the product, and you know, I'm a product person. But um, it's hard to convince. Like, who pays? 
in that system is it's a very hard product to actually do the sales process on. I can imagine that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. What's the name? Market I I really liked it too, but and and the video maker in me thought that it was really great, but I I actually had some questions about whether or not um, people would actually pay for it. If, if, I mean, maybe they would if they were already paying for the other system. They would just mm -hmm. treat it as an additional service. But you know, I, I kind of also wondered if people wouldn't just start using Wave, which I don't see as an email replacement, but I do see as a really good collaboration tool, or mm -hmm. or a wiki, or other kinds of of things to um, to collaborate with. It's yeah. Yeah. there have been a bunch of startups that were were collaborative. Um, so I think editing. we want to make sure we move quickly really because tough. we're going to run out of time at the end of a long day. Um, and um, I think that one of the things we want to do is see what our consensus is on who we would award as a winner. Yeah. For me, I I thought that, and maybe it's because we saw the most UI aside from the Strumi mm -hmm. product, the Sacramento Press. Um, I felt like it it had you know revenue coming in right now and it was mm -hmm. you know it seemed like the most viable product immediately right. how about you Christine um, I would agree uh, on the one hand I would agree that Sacramento press is it's the most viable as a ongoing concern it is not the most viable as a scaling business that actually grows and becomes nationwide yeah, the franchise true. rules in this area are horrific so they're not going to be able to franchise that easily I, again I've got the scars tissue from it uh, but uh, but I do like and I've done philanthropy at, at Omidyar as well I, I thought news desk is actually the most fundable um, as a nonprofit up here because you know foundations love non Profits that can make a lot of their ongoing cost earned income, and I think these guys can do if they can maintain their quality, if they can, um, uh, you know, get get smart about um, how to support collaboration in the syndication service. I think I think they would be something that'd be easily sustainable. I was just mostly concerned for them about their UI, and I, w I actually wanted to see it working. And if it had worked, that would have been my first choice. So we don't have any clear consensus yet, which I think makes me the swing vote, correct? Oh. Isn't that, is that right? I'm voting Sacramento Press. OK, I'm voting Sacramento Press, too. There you go. There so you go. I think we've just awarded the Sacramento Press the top vote, second vote from the audience, but top vote among the judges. Um, so let's, let's come back. Let them bring back, back, let's bring them back in, tell them that we won, give them a quick round of applause, and then call it a night. I wonder if he's in the VC for the nonprofit. You're all in trouble. Get back in here. <laughs> Okay, want you guys to hear it? A budding of a cocktail hour. Um, the judges for 6 and 60 and the audience have voted, and we've awarded the top spot to the Sacramento Press. So, congratulations, Sunny. It was a tough call. There were there were constituencies that liked everybody. Everybody was value, but ultimately we felt that yours was um, the one that was um, the most viable, long-term. Um, not because we believed in your franchising, but because we liked what you were doing. So let's everybody give a hand. We already for these folks, and enjoy the rest of your night. Thanks for coming.